This is Barry from Imagination to Reality CNC. And in this video, we're going to go through two separate scenarios of where we want to stop our cycle in mid sequence. And the second scenario is where we want to stop the cycle in mid sequence, power down the, the PC and or machine to maybe continue at a later date. And that's useful when you're doing some large 3D machining, which could take 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 hours. And at some stage, you may need to take a break and you do not want to leave your machine running overnight or un unattended. In both these scenarios, it's, it assumes that you already understand basic job setup. You've already created your G-code in your CAD CAM software. You know how to set up your tools, set your access origins, clamp your workpiece to the table, and everything that's involved to start a cycle and get a job running. So scenario one is simply, we're gonna stop a cycle mid tracks. And I'm gonna show you the process you need to go through to recover and continue from that stop. And this scenario is where you do not shut down UCCNC or your PC or the machine, and you continue from that point. To do this simply, we're gonna start a very simple G-code cycle. Let's say this is the moment where we needed to stop for some reason. The process to recover from this point has to be followed correctly. And you should never at this stage just simply click start cycle again. The reason for this is the start cycle button reads the G code in order of sequence. At the start of your G code file, it has certain commands like turn the spindle on and set the spindle speed. But if you stop the cycle halfway through the G-code file, it may be missing those commands to start the spindle and set the speeds. So hitting start cycle at this moment will only read the line of G-code it's on, which is most likely going to be moved to the next location. And if we move to the next location in the situation we're in, without the spindle on, it's going to destroy our piece and potentially damage our tool. The correct sequence to follow is on the UCC and C screen, we can find a run from here command. Clicking the run from here command tells the software that you're starting somewhere through the G code and you're missing those imperative commands like starting the spindle and setting the speed. When UCC and C has acknowledged the run from here command, it should come up in the history that can be found at the bottom of the screen and it should highlight run from here and the line number run, which is 156. When this has been acknowledged by the software, now we can proceed to hit the start cycle. This is where a pop-up very new to us has come up that we may have not seen before. And by default, all the default parameters tend to be perfectly suitable to run from this line of the G-code. But it is worth running through them very quickly and understanding what they mean. By default, switch spindle on first is ticked. And all this means is that before anything else happens, it is going to switch to spindle on first before it moves in any other direction. Then it's gonna move the Z axis to a safe height of 25 mil above the surface of the material. The third thing it's gonna do is move the movements with a safe Z to the X, Y, and Z location uh, that is nominated here by default. These positions can't be changed and what they actually are is the last known coordinate that was successfully completed in the G-code file. So it may move back to a slightly previous location that it's already machined. And this is okay and it's intended to do so. It's also gonna move at the feed rate you nominate, which happens to be the feed rate that was set during this G-code, which was 2000 millimeters per minute. If there's any uncertainty here, this is a good time to reduce this feed rate value to maybe 200, 300, 400, where everything moves a little bit slower and maybe gives you a better chance to react if you're worried about the setup not being correct. In our case, I'm more than comfortable with, with everything that comes up in default, and this is where we can acknowledge the settings and the CNC machine will start its cycle. The spindle switches on first, it moves the Z up to the safe value of 25, and then it moves back to the last known completed coordinate. Everything pauses at this point again, and this is perfectly okay and what it, it is intended to do. If we're happy with everything that's happened, we do need to hit start cycle a second time. And now we can see it's completing the G-code as intended. Awesome. 
I've just hit stop cycle again and this comes to the second part of the video of how to recover if we do want to close down the software and restart at a later date. There's two crucial things we need to take note of before we do this though. One is the actual line number that we stopped on in the G-code and this can be found on the screen set under actual line. For us it is 275. The second thing we should take note of is what the spindle speed is. On restart of the software, we're going to have to manually set the spindle speed before we continue the job at line 275. We can clearly see here that the S set, or the spindle speed setting, is 12,000 RPM. Once we have made note of the actual line number and the spindle speed, we can close down the software. To recover from this location, the other things that are important that you don't touch on the machine is we should never remove the workpiece. The software is able to recover its X, Y and Z position, assuming the workpiece is not removed. Also, the X, Y and Z position can be recovered, assuming we don't replace or change the cutting tool. If we do need to replace or change the cutting tool at this point, you will have to complete your Z probing again to set the Z origin or the Z offset. Let's assume now we've come back from a break, the software has been closed down, if the PC has been closed down and the machine has been turned off, this is a point which we can recover from at this stage of the video. Machines powered on, our PC is turned on and we need to start the UCCNC software. Once the software has loaded, as always with UCCNC, on every instance of the software starting up, we need to acknowledge the pop-up on the screen, we need to disengage the software reset and we run a home all command. The home owl command is actually how the machine is going to re recover that position. The home position is in the same spot every time and running that sequence, the machine and the software are able to align themselves again. When the home owl cycle is complete, the next thing we need to do is load our G-code file. Before closing down the software, we made note that there's two things we must jot down on recovery of the job and those two things were the actual line number we stopped in the G-code and the spindle speed. So let's start with the spindle speed. By default, when UCCNC starts up, the spindle speed goes to zero. For the job we were working on, the note we made said the spindle speed should be set to 12,000 RPM. We need to manually set this before running this job. To do this, we use the MDI, which is the manual data input field. Clicking on that will raise the cursor. Using the keyboard, we can type in S for spindle speed and 12,000 to represent 12,000 RPM and press the enter key. Now we can see that the S set has changed to 12,000 and that's important before we start this job. The second note we made when we stopped our job was the actual line number. This needs to be typed in under the actual line field and our actual line was 275 and we must press the enter key for that to be acknowledged. Once we've typed in the line number 275, it's at this point we must not forget we're halfway through the G-code and for that to be acknowledged by the software, we must click run from here. After clicking one from here, two things change on the screen. In the history field, the run from here, line number 275 pops up, but also in the graphical display of our G-code file, we can also see what has already been machined. This is useful because now this gives me confidence that I'm, I'm getting towards my setup. The software knows what's already been done. It actually needs to start from line number 275. I've set my spindle speed of 12,000 RPM. Now I can proceed to maybe reduce the feed rate to 40%. And this is a good idea that if we're unsure of this setup or we're doing it from the first time, that we're only going to run at 40% of the speed and if anything was going to go wrong, we can stop the cycle or hit a restop. So at, at this stage, we've loaded our G-code file, we've set the spindle speed, which we took note of before closing the software, we've selected our line number 275, we've clicked run from here so that the software acknowledges that that's the line we want to run from. Now we're ready to hit start cycle. As always, when proceeding with a run from here command, a pop-up comes up on the screen. Normally by default these settings are pretty good, but there's a new one I want to run through in this instance. We're going to switch the spindle on first, I'm okay with that. It's going to move the Z height to a safe height of 25 mil before making movements with that safe Z to an X value of 0, a Y value of 66 and a Z value of negative 1. But please note the feed rate is set to 200 millimeters per minute. And this effectively is a crawling rate. And if this is your first time doing this, maybe this crawling rate of 200 millimeters per minute is okay. 
But for the purpose of this video, I want to speed things up. And instead of 200 millimeters per minute, I'm going to set the feed rate to 2000 and press enter. If you're happy with these settings on the pop-up that's come up, then we can proceed to click OK. And it's at this point that the spindle will start first, and then it will proceed to run through that little checklist, moving the Z at a safe height to 25 mil to the last known coordinates it was working at in the X and Y position. And when it gets there, it pauses again for you to acknowledge that everything has successfully got to the last known position it was at. And that's now a point where we can hit start cycle for the second time. And we can continue our job. And that concludes the video and hopefully at this stage you can see the two scenarios where the run from here command can be quite useful. Recovering your job after stopping for a pause or a break or recovering your job where you do need to shut down the entire system and continue at a later date. If you have any further questions please feel free to contact us uh, or reach out at any time otherwise thank you for watching.